This week on Facing Waves, we're on BC's Sunshine Coast, an adventure-filled and culturally rich destination that has retained its small town charm and pristine wilderness, despite its proximity to Vancouver. So I've been to the Sunshine Coast almost a dozen times over 20 years, and I keep coming back because it's just an amazing recreational area. I love paddle sports, I love kayaking, I love stand-up paddleboarding, and I love going on adventures with my family and it just is great for doing that. And the environment up there almost seems like it's a little bit like charged, like there's more going on. The eagles seem bigger in the sky, the fish in the water are stronger from the tidal currents, and so the things that you see there are pretty spectacular. So we were staying at the Desolation Sound Resort and we woke up pretty early that morning, walked straight down to the water and met John and Richard with the sea kayaks and took off straight from there. And it was calm and kind of foggy. It was really cool atmosphere paddling along there. My company is Footprint. Uh, I run it together with my, uh, with my wife, Christy. Um, our focus for a kayaking adventure is it has to be an experience, and the experience is a story, a story about the area. John knew so much about the history of the area, from the logging to some old little tales. I mean, there were just so many stories, and I could have listened to him all day long. Uh, the waters in here uh, are very rich and nutrient, so oysters are filter feeders, I like that. They just um, sit in these nets and just, just grow. It takes about two years uh, from oyster larvae to become an oyster this size. They call it a cocktail oyster. Uh, and, and before they can get harvested um, as well. Uh, and in the meantime, they just float in these nets and do what every oyster does, is just feeding on, on the plankton and, uh, and algae in the, in the water here. The new tide that comes in brings in a lot of nutrients as well, which feed all the animals that we, uh, that we see here. Uh, so the tides will have a, a, a major impact on, uh, on the environment here, for sure. We went sea kayaking with Sunshine Kayaking and Gibsons and met up with them down right on the water. They're located right at the docks in, in downtown Gibsons. Loretta and Greg have sunshine kayaking. Uh, they have uh, fishing tours, um, sailing, paddle boarding, kayaking, uh, pretty much anything you want to do on the water, they will provide that service for people. Did some little paddles along the cliff lines and through some waves and then paddled around Keats Island, which was really cool because they have a water access only campground over there so we got out and checked that out. I think there's 12 or 15 campsites there. $16 a night for your campsite. There's a little orchard there, apple orchard. They have water you can pump out there and uh, then you can go paddling from there anywhere. We've been working on turning the entire British Columbia coast into a marine trail, but uh, the Sea to Sky Marine Trail came about because the Trans-Canada Trail needed a link between Horseshoe Bay, where its land trail ended, and the start of the Sea to Sky Trail in Squamish. And because the highway is the only route along the coast there, and it's not possible to build any other kind of a trail, it's just too steep and too rugged, uh, the only option became the water. So now it's uh, the Sea to Sky Marine Trail, but it's also part of the Trans-Canada Trail too, which is great. 